Hello traders, this is Blake Morrow and you are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. I hope everybody's having a great trading session and um, happy Tuesday to you. I just wanna make sure it's Tuesday. Um, so we've seen you know, some fairly decent volatility today. One, well, I think one of the key things that, um, that we should realize is the, the, the Kiwis came, came down and is testing really key support. I mean, this, um, this is the, uh, I'm gonna make this a little thicker just so you guys, and maybe a different color here, just so you can see the the, the real importance of this particular um, support level. This is the breakout point. We've basically come down and tested it once, twice, uh, <laughs> well, however many times you wanna count that. That's just, we've been down here a lot and we're holding. Um, we, we actually just probed below it and we bounced, um, we bounced about you know 15 pips. Uh, you know, obviously um, with the RBNZ today, uh, the risk is, you know, what if the RBNZ comes in dovish? The mar market's kind of expecting a dovish RBNZ anyway, but if, um, you know, the RBNZ tries to talk down its currency because, you know, the, the, the Kiwi has bounced back quite aggressively and, and you know, being where we're at uh, post pandemic, you know, uh, you know, I, I think the RBNZ might be a little concerned with the strength of the New Zealand dollar, considering we're, we're at levels that, you know, we were at back uh, a year ago. And if the economy is, you know, um, they feel that the economy is going to be a little sluggish, they might try to talk down the, the Kiwi. And that is the risk right now with the New Zealand dollar. Um, you know, I think a break below the lows, then you, you know, you're at risk of breaking through 65 cents. Uh, obviously, you know, if the RBNZ is, doesn't, doesn't seem to mind the strength, uh, recent strength in New Zealand dollar, perhaps the New Zealand dollar, you know, is back up at 67 cents. But I think that we, we have to just pay attention to the fact that it is really near some pretty key support at this point in time. Let's take a look at the Euro dollar. So the Euro dollar, you know, it, it bounced back and, 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 um, we're, we're still stalling at the 38% retracement. This is the support. This is the previous support zone, current resistance level that we drew out uh, earlier this morning on the face webinar. And you can see how we're just knocking our head right up against previous support, current resistance, and it's holding. Uh, we haven't broken down yet either. So, you know, in order for the Euro to really start to move lower towards 117, we're probably going to have to see some, you know, some some selling of equities. Now, I know, you know, most of you are probably like, you know, selling of equities. That seems kind of funny, and it does feel kind of funny to say that because it doesn't seem like equities go down. However, let's also just understand that the S and P is, and I'm going to grab this chart really quick. The S and P is at. Um, basically, it's all-time highs. I mean, you know, we're, we're basically right there. It's, you know. Now, are we going to break out? We might. Um, the 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 one thing I would think that we're going to break out. The one thing that you know has me a little concerned about stocks is just how. And you know what? I'm going to grab this really quick. Let me move this just to make it closer to. Uh, I want it to have. I want it to be closer to the other indexes. And the reason why I'm not using FXCM's feed right now is because that that print was bad. So going to intraday doesn't uh, doesn't make sense right at this moment. But um, we're right up against you know that that resistance in the S and P. Thing that makes me a little bit nervous about equities is that we do we do see the the Nasdaq starting to stall. All right, and as you all know the NASDAQ's got all the big names, you know, whether it's Amazon or, you know, Apple or Facebook or, you know, all the big tech names, Netflix. If they really start to show a little bit of weakness, um, will it eventually, you know, bleed its way into the rest of the market? Uh, that's entirely possible. And then one, a couple of the other things that are, are standing out to me is that we have gold, which is trading heavy, and we're about ready to test the all-time high breakout point, you know, at this uh, 1920 level, that's pretty big because if gold breaks down, oh, sorry guys, hold on one second, please. 
Sorry. Excuse, excuse my dogs. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so uh, this happens to be the time where uh, you know, the, there's people rustling around and the dogs get all crazy. Anyway, um, uh, so the, the one thing that I was saying is if gold ends up putting in a false, like longer term breakout, that's a risk, right? Because then, you know, we would see gold weakness, probably dollar strength as a result. And remember, gold is moving very similar, or um, in, um, I want to say in lockstep correlation with equities. So with, you know, with, with gold, if we see gold continuing to slide, is it going to weigh on equities? It's quite possible, which could lead to, like I said, dollar strength. Another one of the th another 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 risk that I wanted to bring up is this. Um, this is the uh, uh, ten-year bond market. Bonds look like they were going to rip. I mean, if you went to last week and you look at this bullish wedge, right? That bullish wedge was very, you know, obviously breaking out. And at that point in time, it looked like there, there was not going to be a lot stopping bonds. Bonds were going to rally. Yields are going to f fall to zero, possibly negative. And here we are reversing and coming through some pretty key support. And so if bonds continue to sell off, yields go up. And if yields go up, the dollar tends to strengthen. So, you know, there's a lot that is pointing to the potential of dollar strength. Last but not least, I want to bring to your attention is volatility. We've talked a lot about volatility, at least in the, uh, you know, um, um, because of the daily sentiment index. The DSI is at um, eight. And let me see if I could do it like this. So you got to watch volatility. In the, in, in the case that volatility starts to break back above like 25, that's going to be bullish volatility again bullish volatility would mean probably weaker equities stronger dollar those types of things okay so um just just a few things that i think we should keep an eye on as far as you know the market goes the dollar is pretty choppy here uh, you know what i what i'm really hoping for and not necessarily going to get but what i'm hoping for as many of you know is I really would like to see the euro dollar um, break through this, you know, support here at 117 to give us the move down to towards the one, you know, sub 116 level, 115, whatever, you know, just give us a little bit of breakdown in the dollar, which will allow us to, you know, buy the dollar on a dip. That's what I'm hoping happens. But what I hope for and what happens is two totally different things. But that's what I'm hoping for from an opportunistic standpoint. Uh, and guys, if you're uh, listening in live, I want to thank you for all your support as a Forex Analytics customer. Uh, for those of you that are not and you're listening to this after the fact, remember it's only $1 for 10 days to try out Forex Analytics. You'll be able to try out the premium version uh, for your $1. And uh, this way you can listen to this live as it's broadcasting. So guys and gals, thank you so much. Uh, let me see, it. wait, just make sure. Uh, Martin says the Euro US dollar head and shoulder would be nice. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't really see a head and shoulder, maybe an inverted, but you know, w w w maybe, oh, maybe a double headed shoulder <laughs> well it might be a double top though uh anyway uh, yeah I, i'd love to see just a little bit of selling and the euro would be nice just to and, and i don't even care if it gets the, the whole market really short and we only you know we only back it up to 116 before bouncing I, I, that would be that would work too you know i, I don't i don't necessarily care about a full-on breakdown i just would really like to see a little volatility coming. Anyway, all right, guys, have a great one. Thank you so much for your support. I will uh, catch you guys uh, in the chat rooms or wherever. All right, thanks.